So next, we're going to have Jiameng Shi from University of Georgia. Uh, he'll talk to us about um, fuzzing firmware, where um, really instrumenting and doing analysis on the MCU microcontroller is not possible. So leveraging uh, a separate computer to get the traces and perform uh, bug hunting is the focus. Uh, so, okay. <coughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jia Meng Shi, a PhD student from the University of Georgia. Uh, today, I'd like to present our research um, facilitating non-intrusive in vivo former testing with stateless instrumentation. And this is a collaborative study worked with an independent researcher, Wen Qiang Li, and two faculty members from the University of Georgia, uh, Wen Wen Wang and Le Guan. Uh, nowadays, uh, microcontrollers are being ubiquitous in the IoT world, and they are widely adopted in the smart home systems and the smart factory system to control various devices. Um, however, these devices are extremely vulnerable, and these vulnerabilities are typically incurred by the firmware box. And exploitation of these bugs often causes significant economic loss and even a personal injury or death. So in recent years, um, many works has been proposed to help us in finding software bugs. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, hey, hey, sorry. Uh, how, how can I go back to the previous slides? OK. OK. Um, anger, for example. Um, is a popular uh, symbolic execution framework um, to help us uh, analyze the, the software. Um, however, uh, these tools uh, were designed for analyzing the PC software while not being applicable for the uh, microcontrollers for the two reasons. Uh, first, uh, the microcontrollers have a totally different development environment compared with PC. Um, the, the former development uh, must be accomplished with, uh, uh, with a development PC and, uh, and a debug dongle. The debug dongle has uh, ultimate control to the microcontroller and is acting as an uh, interface between the developers and, uh, and the target microcontroller. Second, the microcontroller also have uh, different runtime information. And uh, in general, microcontrollers are intended to process the specific tasks, so there's no support of operating systems like Windows or Linux that are running on a PC. In addition to the environment, the restricted hardware resources also um, make the analysis infeasible on the microcontrollers. For example, the memory overhead of ASAM is intolerable in most, micro, in most of microcontroller scenarios. And uh, also, although we can um, observe the runtime information of the firmware on the PC with the aid of debug dongle, there's still a semantic uh, gap that, that keep us from doing a comprehensive analysis. So uh, recent studies are seeking for efficient ways to analyze firmware on the PC with the, uh, with the conjunction with the target microcontroller. Uh, micro AFL and the GDB FAS are two representative works. The micro AFL leverage the ARM uh, ETM uh, to collect and stream out the code coverage, and the GDB FAS collects the code coverage um, with the hardware breakpoints and uh, uh, a dynamic CFG analysis. However, there are two limitations to both works. First, uh, both works um, only collect the code coverage and the lack of sanitizers limited, limited their capabilities for hunting box. And second, and both works relies on uh, special hardware features like ATM and, and breakpoints so, so that their application is limited to the ARM-based microcontrollers. So um, to overcome the shortcomings in the related works, um, we proposed a new framework named IPEA. Uh, which is short for in vivo prop ex vivo analysis. And here are the three design goals of this work. 
First, non-intrusive means that IPA seamlessly integrates into the existing firmware development workflow and doesn't rely on any hardware. Second, in vivo means that the, the runtime information of the firmware is collected by the software instrumentation and without any uh, special hardware dependent that's used in the related works. Third, uh, the in instrumentation is lightweight. We achieved this by offloading anything to the PC. So um, this is the overall design of our framework. The prototype board is used for writing the firmware and its runtime information is collected by the uh, lightweight instrumentation. And uh, the debug dongle is in charge of streaming out the collected information as a packet to the development PC. And on the PC side, um, the IP core is running along with the plugin system. And the pack depositor inside the, the IP core is responsible for delivering the re, uh, received packets from the firmware and to, to, the, uh, to the corresponding uh, analysis plugin. The plugin system includes a point based sanitizer named IPA-san, uh, which is used for hunting memory corruptions in the firmware. And uh, the IPA files is a grid box father with edge coverage as feedback. So the question is, how we make the instrumentation lightweight? Traditionally, the instrumentation um, is comprised of three parts, the information collecting, information uh, storing, and analyzing. Um, specifically, the storing the information and analyzing the information are contributing the majority of overhead. And uh, for example, the, the storing requires the extra memory space and the analyzing requires the extra computation. Unfortunately, both storing and the computation are scarce resources on the microcontrollers. So, with the stateless instrumentation, um, we can offload the, the data storage and the analysis to the PC, and therefore uh, reduce the, the significantly reduce the overhead introduced to the microcontroller and uh, leaving the instrumentation lightweight. So, as as we mentioned before, uh, we developed two plugins. The first plugin is a IPA SAM, a point-based sanitizer. The basic idea of point-based sanitizer is to associate each pointer with its metadata of the capabilities like, uh, like, like the bounds and the validity. The pointer metadata will be checked uh, on the pointer dereferences. And the memory tagging is another kind of point-based sanitizer. It marks the, the memory of new allocated objects and its receiving point, point with a with the same tag, and all accesses to that memory must be made by a pointer that having the same tag. RMTE uh, employs this design. So the, the IPE sun is inspired by the, uh, by the RMT technology, which is used in the high-end ARM systems while not being supported by the microcontrollers. So we virtually extended the capabilities of microcontroller uh, by, emulate, by, by emulating RMTE. So here's, a, here's a, an example of the legacy point-based sanitizer like SoftBond proposed in 2009. As shown in this, in this picture, the, everything has to be done on the microcontroller and uh, we, need a, we, we, need a, we need a table to, store, to, to locally store the point of metadata. And also the sanity check also needs a on-device computation. So with the, uh, compared to the SoftBond, uh, IPSM, um, offloads any stuff to the PC. Um, like uh, the, the point of metadata are maintained on the PC and the sanity, sanity check is also done by the PC as well. Uh, to be able to recover and uh, maintain the net metadata on the PC, the each pointer will be associated with a compi compiler generated ID and the, the instrumentation uh, will stream out the pointer along with the pointer ID and its, and its parameters to the PC. After receiving the point operations on the PC, um, the, the IPA-SAN uh, plugin uses these two data structures 
uh, to emulate uh, the functionalities of ARM MT. The ID tag table stores the uh, uh, stores the mapping between the point ID and the point tag, and the shadow memory stores the memory tag uh, of each memory byte. Now, I'd like to use an example to explain the workflow of IPSM. In this code, uh, there are three kind of point-related operations here. So in the first operation, uh, an object is allocated. So the IPSM uh, will associate the shadow memory and its uh, a receiving pointer with the same tag. And the next, uh, the, pointer, uh, the pointer is propagated, propagated to another one. So it's, its tag is propagated as well. Before dereferencing the pointer on the, in, the, in the third operation, um, the IPSM uh, will examine, will, will examine the, the pointer tag with the, with the memory tag. If they are matched, everything goes well. Otherwise, an error is raised. In addition to the object uh, granularity uh, sanitization, um, IPSN uh, realized the uh, fine grained sanitization um, by detecting the intra object overflow. The intra object overflow means that if an object, if an object contains a sub object inside, uh, a buffer overrun of its sub-object uh, can corrupt its, uh, its um, uh, neighbor field. Uh, this kind of overflow cannot be detected by the red zone based sanitizer like ASAM. So the IP ASAM, um deals with this challenge by uh, introducing tag overlay. In the beginning, um, when an object is created, all of its memory is associated with the same tag. So the the member selection operation is sent to the PC by the instrumentation. On receiving the, on receiving the, uh, the member selection operation, uh, the IP sign will uh, overlay its tag uh, of the selected member. And at, a, at this time, the pointer check will be made by comparing the new tag. And of course, a, a buffer overrun of the sub object will be detected by the mismatch tag. To verify the uh, capabilities of IPSAN, uh, we developed the second uh, plugin named IPA FOSS. Um, IPA FOSS also consists uh, of a stateless instrumentation and a, a analysis running on the PC. The instrumentation uh, simply generates a random number to identify a basic block, and the random, ran ran random numbers will be further uh, retrieved by the IPA FOSS plugin um, that, that, share, that, that maintain uh, a bitmap that's shared with the IPA, the, the, the AFL father to, to record the code coverage. Um, we evaluated uh, this framework um, with these uh, development boards shipped by different vendors and the uh, debug dongle, uh, Sega JLink ADU. So the evaluation aimed at answering the three research questions. Uh, first, what kind of memory errors can be captured by IPSN? And the second, uh, how about the the overhead introduced uh, by the instrumentation, and third, will the combination of IPSAN and IPFAS find more bugs? Uh, for the first question, uh, we verified IPSAN with the uh, uh, Juliet test suite. Uh, given that IPSAN is designed for hunting memory corruptions inside the firmware, so we only picked up the, the memory-related uh, test cases from the test suite. We also ported the ASAN to microcontrollers as a comparison. Because of no paging system applied to the microcontrollers, and uh, so the, the shadow memory of ASAN cannot be mapped to the non-existing page. So to make the comparison fair, uh, we scaled the, uh, the shadow memory to the actually allocated uh, uh, memory instead of the whole memory in different firmware. So this is a, a quantitative evaluation uh, the results show that IPSM um, outperforms ASAM um, with, um, with neither false negatives nor false positives. Uh, for the ASAM, the false negative reported is mainly caused by the intra-object overflow and uh, non-linear out-of-bound uh, non out, out accesses. Um, for the second question, 
uh, we evaluated the IP and the ASAM on the BIPS benchmark and the 12 real world applications. The results show that um, IP ASAM uh, consumes uh, more flash memory than ASAM because, because it does more instrumentation on different pointer related operations, while ASAM only considers the, the pointer dereferences. But on the other hand, uh, ASAM consumes much more uh, SRAM than IP ASAM uh, because of its red zones and the shadow memory. And furthermore, we found that some uh, real world applications uh, even failed to be compiled with ASAM. Uh, to answer the third question, um, we carried out a fighting campaign over 24 hours um, for, um, the, with three, with, with, with three uh, IoT libraries and the six peripheral driver code. We finally found seven zero-day bugs, and three bugs were found in the, I, in the IoT libraries, and four bugs were found in the peripheral driver code, including a commercial product. So in conclusion, uh, we present the design and the implementation of IPA firmware analysis frame, framework and two analysis plugins for it. The seamlessly integrate, they, they seamlessly integrate into the existing uh, firmware development environment, allowing developers to run advanced firmware testing while developing the firmware. And by offloading the analysis to the, to the development PC, the proposed analysis techniques uh, significantly reduce the, the memory overhead compared with the solutions that run entirely on the microcontrollers. So uh, thank you for watching my presentation. Um, and if you are interested in our projects, uh, please find the source code uh, from, the, uh, from our GitHub repo. And also, I'm currently in the job market if you are interested in my research and, uh, or match to your job positions, uh, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Any question for Jeremy? Raj. Yes. Uh, so thank you. This is a great, great work. Uh, I think very practical. Uh, I'd like to use it. Is it available in on GitHub or some repo I can look at the code? Uh, 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 so, sorry, sorry. Can, 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 can you say that? Is, is your uh, prototype or uh, implementation available for testing on uh, GitHub? It's OK. I, I, I saw the answer. OK. I think the question is like you're sharing the source code of you. Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. yes. You, can, you can find the source code from the from, so from service. One, one, one clarification. So you said that in, the, in your last slide that you know, this is done during developing uh, stage of the firmware. But yes. Then you also said you tested some products, which yeah. obviously were already post development. So how did you manage to test the firmware that has already been made? Mm, you mean how do I manage the the firmware or? Yeah. So how do you probe the oh, firmware? Oh yeah. So this firmware. Um, okay. Oh. So this firmware uh, first uh, from the two sources. The first the first source is. Uh, we got this firmware from the from the SDK provided by the by the uh, microcontroller vendors, and uh, we also f have another um, product that uh, because we we have a contract with that with a, with, with that, that company, so they provide us a source code. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we found we found several bugs from there, but we can we, we cannot report them. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, mentioning your affiliation, I forgot to ask. Hi. Uh, Hi, Yaniv, Columbia University. Thank you for this amazing talk. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Did you have any idea of or like line of thought of how to expand this kind of work to uh, a board that has a few microcontrollers mm -hmm. and fuzzing them together and kind of exploring race conditions and these kind of bugs? Um, so, um, so you mean how how I can expand this work to to the to a board to to other to other products, right? Boards that have multiple microcontrollers that are working on the same bus or something. Oh, yes. Uh, this work uh, is designed for, um, um, it, it, actually, it's um, a board agnost agnostic. It can apply to uh, any boards. If, 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 um, uh, and currently, we only tested uh, the, this framework on the ARM-based microcontrollers. But uh, actually, it, this work doesn't rely on any ARM features. Uh, I think we can, uh, we can extend this work easily to any other architectures like RISC-V or MIPS right, microcontrollers. OK, thank you. I'll follow up offline. OK. Hi, uh, Ryan from Georgia Tech. Uh, really cool presentation. Um, uh -huh. Quick question. 
the the seven zero day bugs that you found. Um, can you provide some insight on like severity or exploit like exploitability, or did you receive CVEs for these? Like, what was the reporting process like? Um, the let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, the bugs that we found in the first uh, we found the, the, the bugs in the IoT libraries. Uh, these libraries were are widely used uh, in in the um, application development in, in in the IoT domain, and uh, the the bugs found in the driver code is uh, also provided by the um, uh, by the SDK, and which is used by which is used used in the in, in, in the former development. Yeah, I I, I believe that there as the, the driver pro, the proposed in the in the SDK is widely used in the real uh, real world product development. Yeah. Um. So did you receive like CVEs or were these patched or, or what happened? Ah, uh, sorry. Are these bugs patched now? Oh uh, yes, we patched them. We patched them, and we have several, um, um, like um, a, a CV, a, 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 a CV uh, submission, but they are still under review. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, One. Um, this is Tohit from Georgia Tech. Uh, no. I have a question about um, the. The devices that you analyzed, did, did you analyze any devices in particular, or did you analyze only the libraries that are used in the IoT devices? Um, uh, right now, we only analyzed uh, the, the, the devices we, uh, I, I presented before, the, the, like the, the, seven or the, the seven development boards we are, we, are, we are used in this work. And is there any like particular JTAG standard that is required or prerequisite for your analysis? Or like, what if an IoT device doesn't have an exposed like JTAG port, or some of the pins are not available? Yeah, these uh, these device boards, all these device boards have the the, the debug the debugging port, because our uh, our work is tended to um, in, uh, integrate uh, this framework into the. Into the development stage, not to the, not, not 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 the final product stage. Yeah. So, so the I believe the the development stage is typically uh, worked with on the the, the prototype board. So th they must have the the the, the, the debug, debugging port like like JTAG or SW SW and so on. And as a final question, do you have any rough estimates of how many of these devices or what share of these devices? Have these like JTAG ports exposed uh, to be used like by such tools? Um, well, for this question, um, yeah, uh, right now our work is only limited to these uh, to the to the prototype boards uh, I presented before. I see. Yeah, yeah. good work. Thank, thank you. you. Cool. Let's thank Jamie again. Please. Thank, thank you.